Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah. Now, this week there took place the very first Blackthorn Prod Game Jam, which is a game creation event that challenged developers to make an entire game from scratch in only one week, and around a given theme. The theme of this Game Jam was game development. In short, to make a game about the game creation world, be that a shooter where you blast at programming bugs, a game that allows players to make their own little game, or an RPG where the heroes are artists, coders and musicians. I was overjoyed by the number of participants in the jam, which was over a thousand, making it one of the biggest game jams on itch.io. I was also blown away by the incredible amount of entries. 300 completed games, so many of which are fascinating, filled with brilliant ideas, awesome art, clever stories, and juicy sound effects. Now the developers who made a game during the jam can rate each other's games, and once the rating period over, I'll be making a video highlighting the best stuff made. In the meantime, I want to share with you the story of how I made my game in one week for this jam, using as usual the Unity game engine, Photoshop, and the C-sharp programming language. Like with almost all game jam experiences, making my game entitles the game creation recipe was epic. It was stressful, sometimes really tough, but mostly it was a fun and very rewarding journey. Notes that I would love if you played my game before watching this video, because I'm about to spoil a lot of its secrets. Anyway, as usual, I had to come up with an idea. Now, being the one who organized this game jam and who also decided on the theme, I already had many ideas floating around my head when the jam started. But as always, my first ideas are rarely any good. They may sound fun or interesting on paper, but quickly fall apart inside of Unity. First of all, me and my brother planned on working on a game together for the jam. Our first idea being a combat style game between game dev and design YouTubers, like Brackies vs Saiku, Mark Brown vs Extra Credits, Blankthorn Prod vs Game Dev Underground and so on. Each character having unique game dev related abilities and quirks. And that's actually a game concept I'm still seriously thinking of working on. It would be loads of fun to create. But the idea was very ambitious for a 7 day time limit and I frankly felt like involving other YouTubers in on the project. Getting them to do sound effects and discuss their abilities and so on. So yeah, just not enough time. After reaching that conclusion by the end of day one, we began working on a brand new game idea at the start of day two. This time, me and my bro decided to try and make a strategy game. And we ended up prototyping everything in one day. You would control little characters, getting them to move around the scene, collecting game creation resources from these golden trees, such as inspiration, art, programming knowledge and music notes, and then direct your mini troops back to the center of the map to fuel the developer with all that newly collected loot. All the while using those same troops to stop the pesky red bugs, doubts and procrastinators from reaching the center. Sadly, the game just wasn't fun, and there really wasn't much strategy involved. It was mostly just a frantic, mouse-clicking experience. And with 5 days and a half remaining, we still had largely enough time to work on something else. Sadly, my brother wasn't able to continue this game jam journey with me because of a busy, stinky high school timetable and much laborious homework. However, I was back at square one, finding a game idea I could pour all of my passion and energy into for the remaining 5 days of the jam. And so, recalling what I had said in my behind-the-scenes video, of my game The Link made for the GMTK Game Jam, I tried hard to focus on making a game I would find fun and enjoyable to create, and not worry too much about what others would say or think about it. After racking my brain for a few hours and playing some of my favourite games again like Hollow Knight, Divinity, Original Sin, and then watching a few Mark Brown videos, notably the one on the magic of the first legend of Zelda, I knew what I had to make, an adventure game filled with secrets, monsters, and loot. So I began by drawing a rough map of the small worlds I wished to bring to life, with the encounters I wanted to create, loot found, and a couple locations for secret passages. The world would be a representation of an aspiring game developer's mind. I wanted the player to have to battle some of the things that stop most people from making anything, such as doubts and lack of confidence, procrastination, programming struggles, and lack of artistic skills. These are challenges that many people struggle with, myself included, and so in a way, I wanted this game to remind people that they're not alone facing these problems, and that these issues can be faced and defeated with enough time and perseverance. 
Looking back, the idea was incredibly ambitious, but I was pretty desperate to work on something at that point. And so I got cracking, telling to myself I would miss a few extra hours sleep each night if need be. Initially, the combat between the player and the hordes of procrastinators, bugs and doubts lurking in the minds would work like in a simple top-down sure game, but after programming the rotation of the character's weapon, which is actually a paintbrush, I felt it would be more interesting and pretty satisfying if he could pop his foes simply by colliding his brush with those enemies. So I spent a couple hours making the core mechanic of the game destroying enemies and dodging them feel juicy and fun, using loads of particles, trill effects, as well as programming a simple dash move. Having this satisfying combat gave me the motivation to push forward and begin working on the first areas of the world. I decided the player would have to search for six key ingredients needed for a developer to make a game, each ingredient guarded by some fierce foes, or hidden somewhere in the world. This gave players a pretty straightforward goal and left them free to wander around the environment and get a bit lost. With that all decided and set up, I was feeling great. I just love doing this, making games is freaking brilliant. Building a small world from the ground up is really pure magic. Basically, once I started working on this game, I couldn't stop. The rest of the day, I built a strange, bug-infested area filled with spiders that disable your weapon for a short period of time with cobwebs, and I also created the first boss. Remembering the unexpected magic of stumbling upon a secret passage in Hollow Knight, I made a couple secret rooms that the player could reveal simply by colliding with the right wall, which would then play a fade-out animation and reveal that previously hidden area. Then I finally went to bed, had a few game dev dreams, and got cracking again in the morning. With my rough map sketch as a reference, I began blocking in the other areas of the game. First of all, I created a dark, dungeon-like area filled with vampiric enemies. This part of the world represents the unhealthy tendency I have of staying indoors too much, and how that can lead to laziness, lack of energy and motivation. For me anyway. There is a bright little outdoor corner players can find in the twisting dark corridors should they search well enough, and that hides one of the game's six ingredients. And then in the afternoon, I created a green tinted area filled with enemies wielding spiky paintbrushes and designed this sad boss character who can't draw, or at least believes he can't, and so fills the developer's mind with toxic doubts. In short, it was an awesome day. As I said on Twitter, never had I created so much in such a short period of time. On Wednesday, I worked on sound effects using the free and pretty awesome tool Audacity. As usual, I made all kinds of weird noises with the use of my microphone, editing those slightly, changing, for example, the pitch, to make sounds a bit more squeaky or deep, adding a bit of echo and reverb here and there, and by the end of the morning, dashing around the world and destroying enemies felt a whole lot more interesting and satisfying. It's only once the sounds had been added that I realized how important they really are and how empty and lifeless the game feels without them. So again, take an hour or two to add sounds to your game during any game jam. It will make a big, very positive difference. At this point, I felt it was due time to get my brother playtesting the game before adding or tweaking anything else. And I was overjoyed to see that he really enjoyed the small adventure I'd created so far. He especially likes the secret passages, and at that point there really weren't that many. So as soon as he stopped playing, I began creating dozens of hidden nooks and crannies. Doing so was extremely fun and very addicting. I wanted to add a little secret absolutely everywhere, and I kind of did. Some reveal things that inspire me like other indie games, other secret passages hold weapon boosts, or a message, or weird, sometimes disturbing characters. Or just fat enemies to smash. I really struggled deciding how obvious my secret passages should be. At that point, I felt like the game's secrets were its number one strong point, and the thought that some players might not find a single one filled me with horror. On the other hand, making the secrets too obvious wouldn't really count as a secret anymore, and that feeling of wonder, surprise, and excitement would disappear. It was a fine balance, but I'm pretty happy with the end result. All the secret areas can be found by staring nice and hard, at the game world. I used simple soft shapes to create some lighting effects pouring out from these hidden areas, slightly nudging the player in the right direction, without openly telling them that the wall was fake. Some walls are also a bit bent or have a very thin crack, which should pick up the player's curiosity and get him prodding the world. I actually created a whole hidden area, 
a dark place filled with zombie creatures and a Frankenstein-like boss monster. His unfinished look representing many developers' great struggle at finishing what they start. Once the player has found a few secret passages, he shouldn't have too much of a problem finding the path leading to this area. Though he might do, if he's only focusing on the rotating trap. So all these secrets are basically here to reward curious, searching players. I wanted to give them that urge to poke every single wall and once the game switched off, wonder for a bit if they really did find everything the world had to offer. After having made all those secrets, I only had one day left, which I spent on a simple win scene to reward the few players that do overcome the many challenges this game throws at them and find these six ingredients. And I then created some music for boss encounters, and there's also a little tune that will play when the player finds a weapon boost. La. And there we go, the game was complete, more or less. But I did feel like going through the whole game all over again and polishing up every single part of the map, adding little creatures, more particle effects and so on. But I didn't have enough time. I realized that if I polished one area of the game, then I would have to do so for every other part as well, to stay consistent and not put off the player. Plus at that point, I really did need a break from intense game dev, so the thought of going back in and beautifying every single area was a bit daunting. So in the end, I kept the world nice and simple. So yeah, working on this game was very different from much of what I created in the past. Designing secret passages, a weird melee combat system, and making the world not completely linear was a novelty I thoroughly enjoyed exploring. I would have liked making the areas more interconnected and less cut off from each other, but that would have required more time, a precious resource I was running very low on. With that all said, it's time for me to play extensive amounts of BTP Game Jam games. Also, if you missed this Game Jam or couldn't finish your game on time, or just didn't like the theme, don't worry, I'll be hosting many more Game Jams in the near and far future. Alright, thanks so much for watching. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoy the video. Also consider supporting me financially via Patreon like these awesome supporters. You can also follow me on Twitter where I post drawings and update you on the progress I'm making on my current game projects and more. As you're at it, why not also join the BTP Discord server to chat with me and other cool devs, share your work and ask for help. Now I have a wealth of game creation videos hungrily waiting to be made and shared with you all. So stay tuned, have a great day, cheers! Yeah.